as part of my investigative journey and my weight loss, I read something that really pissed me off. Vegetable oils make us fat and coconut oils make us lean or skinny. And this turns out to be something that we've known since 1946 with pigs. That vegetable oils make pigs fat and coconut oils make pigs lean. And this is something that was published in the 1946 Encyclopedia Britannica Annual. So it's not something that people didn't know about. It was something that was available to everybody, at least everyone that had access to an encyclopedia in their library. And so we've known for over 70 years that vegetable oils were fattening, or you could substitute coconut oils, 100% by the way, and they're not so fattening. And the reasons for that, that people thought initially was thyroid function, because coconut oils help thyroid function, while vegetable oils inhibit thyroid function. And given there's an epidemic of hypothyroidism that has been somewhat correlated with the obesity epidemic, vegetable oils may be a contributing factor. I have not conducted enough research to say if I think it's the main factor or if it's just contributing. I am aware that people that reverse their metabolic disorders may also be able to reduce their hypothyroidism. And as part of that, giving up seed oils may contribute as well as giving up sugars, carbs, alcohols, etc. Now, the way I think it works as the main thing, in addition to the thyroid function, is the shorter, the medium chain fatty acids, the C6 to C12, and I include C12 in medium chain because they are digested the same way as the C6 to C10. The shorter chain acids are mostly used for energy. When they get, when you ingest them, and they go almost straight to your liver where they get used for energy by the liver and converted into ketones. They're used for energy by your heart and your brain and other tissue. And so they never get converted into fats. And even the smaller amount of C12, the lauric acid, that does get into your bloodstream because it's the most efficiently used fatty acid for energy throughout the rest of your body, it's usually the first to be burned for energy. So it doesn't end up in the fats. And people that have investigated fatty acids in human fatty tissue and the liver and in, in the blood have found that you don't see C6 to C12. You start seeing the myristic acid, C14, and palmitic acid, C16, in the blood, <clears throat> or in the fat, and fatty tissues. And the predominant fats in the human body fat are oleic acid, palmitic acid, and linoleic acid. And those are the most common fatty acids in olive oil, palm oil, and avocado oil. And the linoleic acid in particular comes from the vegetable oils uh, in higher concentration. Now, if we look at every major food group we eat, vegetable oils is the only one that correlates with the obesity epidemic. People like to blame sugars and high fructose corn syrup in particular. But the thing is, table sugar, sucrose, is half fructose, and high fructose corn syrup is roughly half fructose. Even honey is a little more than half fructose, if you just look at the sugars. So, all the sugars we consume normally are fairly high in fructose, and fruit as well. So, High fructose corn syrup doesn't really make a difference given that 
the total consumption of sugars has not changed much. And if we look at carbs, in particular processed and refined carbs, the grains, there was a correlation with obesity, but then the correlation was broken the last decade or so. So something is still driving obesity. And what it is, is the spike in vegetable oil. It's the only thing that trends the entire trend with obesity. And yes, correlation is not causation. But if there's only one thing that correlates, there's a good bet that that's it. Now, there is something else I forgot to put on my list, and that's antibiotics. And antibiotics cause weight gain. So the antibiotics fed to animals are problematic when they get to humans. So that's a contributing factor, at least a little bit. And coconut oil in particular has been investigated for its antibiotic pro properties. The main fatty acid, lauric acid, which is about 50% of coconut oil, is antibiotic and antimicrobial, antiviral and antifungal. So it can be added to a pig or chicken diet in order to make them fatter and healthier at about 2% rate. So the key here when I'm talking coconut oil and vegetable oil is a 100% thing. If you get rid of 100% of the vegetable oils and use coconut oil instead, you won't gain weight. You'll stay lean. And palm kernel oil, not the regular palm oil, has a similar fatty acid profile to coconut oil. So that's a substitute if you don't like coconut oil. Uh, and I use a non-scented coconut oil for most of my cooking where I don't want it to taste like coconuts and then use the virgin coconut oil for things when I don't mind the coconut flavor and smell. And another way we know that there's a correlation between vegetable oils and obesity is there's a trend of an increase in linoleic acid in human fat composition that trends with the obesity epidemic. So, and linoleic acid coming predominantly from the vegetable oils. And that relates to another problem that animals raised for meat that are fed grains are also high in linoleic acid because they get it in their fatty tissue. Then when we eat the meat, we get that into our body and it has the same negative effects that it has, including weight gain, uh, as eating the vegetable oils themselves. So some people go to the extremes of avoiding meat products that were fed grains. And that includes cows and pigs and chickens and farm-raised fish. And so if you are trying to lose a lot of weight and as fast as possible, you, you have to look at those sources as well. And one thing we know for sure, even with all the demonization of saturated fats, if you look at fat consumption of all types, saturated fat consumption has not gone up. It's the unsaturated fats, the vegetable oils predominantly, that have gone up over time. Although even margarines has dropped as we realize that margarines are bad and frankly they should be pulled from our shelves completely, but they've dropped and butter has not gone up substantially and lard and tallow have not gone up substantially. Although even lard and tallow in the U.S. have been contaminated by linoleic acid that were fed to the cows and pigs. So store-bought lard and tallow are not good options anymore. The only other good option is butter from grass-fed cows. And butter, by the way, contains some of the medium chain triglycerides, the MCTs and lauric acid in a higher concentration so that they can be used by babies for quick energy. And so they're also healthier if we use butter or ghee when we're cooking. So that's an option for a lot of people that's somewhat healthier, although it's still high in oleic, palmitic, and linoleic acid are still present. 
So anyway, that's the results of some of my investigations. And so if you're trying to lose weight like I was, and you still want to use oils in your cooking, coconut oil and palm kernel oil are your two best options, in my opinion. And the evidence has been backing that up going back to 1946. So I hope you enjoy this somewhat different video. If you did, please leave a comment if you'd like me to do more of these. And if you do like it, please like, share, and subscribe with your diet conscious friends. And I will be, I'll do a little bit more one way or the other. So thanks for watching.